Alright guys, what separates a good video editor from a mediocre one? Well, let me tell you something. The good video editor and the mediocre one might possibly get the same final result, but the good video editor takes like one day to do the project and the mediocre one takes like two or three days to get the project done. So it is important to speed up your workflow not only because the client will be much happier when the project is done in less time, but also you have a lot more free time to do other things like spending time with your family or whatever it is that you want to spend time on. So in today's video, I want to show you an example of my keyboard shortcuts that speed up my editing workflow in DaVinci Resolve. So let's take a look. <laughs> So guys, when you are editing, using keyboard shortcuts will tremendously increase the speed of your editing workflow. Let me show you right here in real time. Let's start from scratch. Let's import some media by hitting Ctrl and I, and then hit open much faster than just right clicking, import media, and then importing your media. So this is the first keyboard shortcut that I use on a daily basis. So now, most people like to go ahead, mark this all and just drag it on their timeline. Instead, I just go ahead, double click this, then I hit play. And now I use my in and out points to mark specific parts of the video that I want on my timeline. So I'll just make a rough cut. And the in point is by default on I, the out point is by default on O, and I use a pant on timeline and I just map this to you. So I use three fingers to put my in points, my out points and the pendant onto the timeline. So let's just go ahead, hit play, in point, out point and the pendant on timeline. And then I go ahead, double click there, play, in point, out point, the pendant on timeline. So you see, I haven't moved my mouse at all, but I just dragged in parts of the clip. So when it comes to zooming in and out on your timeline, most people like to move their mouse there and zoom, but I just leave my mouse where it is and then hit alt on my keyboard and then scroll your mouse wheel up and down. Or when you want to navigate like this, just click your mouse wheel, hold it, drag your mouse to the left or to the right. So you can navigate through your timeline. All right, the next keyboard shortcut that I, that I use is the J, K and L keys. The K is pretty much just pause. Then I hit L to play. I hit K to pause or I hit J to reverse. And I can double click or triple click. This doubles or quadruples the speed. I normally use this when I watch my videos back or before I start editing, I watch everything that I dropped on my timeline back in two times of the speed to see if there are any mistakes that I want to delete. And when it comes to deleting, let's say just hit play and let's say I want a cut right there. I hit W and then right there. And let's say this last portion of my clip, I don't want that. I just hit E on my keyboard and this automatically deletes it. Let's say I don't want the beginning of this clip. I just hit Q on my keyboard, which automatically deletes the beginning. These are my keyboard shortcuts for splitting, for start to playhead or end to playhead. This is my Q, W and E. All right. So sometimes I don't want to have my snapping tool on and I can activate and deactivate this by hitting N on my keyboard, which is the default key. When I make my rough cuts, I also go ahead and change the color of each clip while I'm editing. And all of this by just hitting one button. So I mapped my colors to my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero keys. Whenever I go through a project and I make my rough cuts, I will rewatch this in the viewer as I'm cutting. You know, I don't have to watch on my keyboard which keys I have to hit to make a cut or end to play it, start to play it. So I can rest my fingers on my one, two, three, four, five keys to automatically color my clips. Because whenever I'm editing, I use a lot of speed ramps. So I'm not doing the speed ramps right now. So let's go ahead and hit four. So even now, when I'm far zoomed out, I know that I want a speed ramp happening on those clips. So it is easier for me when I'm done with my editing to know where I want my speed ramps to happen. And when it comes to speed ramps, most people know you can access the retime controls by hitting Control and R on your keyboard. Now, 
I mapped shift and R to my read time curve. So this is way faster than right clicking and hitting read time curve and read time controls. So I can get access to this in a split second, right? And then I, let's say I make this something like that. So you see, this is so good and this saves so much time when you implement that in your workflow. But not also, not only can you do this, I can also navigate through my entire pages by hitting shift one is my project manager. Shift two will be this page. Shift three is the cut page. Shift four is the edit page. Shift five is my fusion page. And then shift six will be the color page. Shift seven is Fairlight and shift eight is the export settings. So that's a pretty good way. You know, I know that my color page is page six, so I can just go there and I can go back to my edit page by hitting shift and four. So you can easily navigate wherever you want in your project. So these are the main keyboard shortcuts that I use when I'm doing my rough cut. So now after you know my keyboard shortcuts, I can show you how you can create your own. Go in the top left corner, hit DaVinci Resolve, and then go to keyboard customization. There's also a keyboard shortcut for that. It's Control, Alt, and K. And let's just open. So now you see my Q was star to playhead, my W was split clip, and my E was end to playhead. My one is lime, two is orange, three pink, four purple, five violet, and zero is blue. And the J key is play reverse, the K is stop, and the L is play forward. And we have shift and R is our read time curve. We have control and R is read time controls. We have N, which is snapping tool, but I also have my I, which is mark in, O is mark out, and U is append to end of timeline. So when you wanna remap something, let's go right here and let's say I wanna change my append key. So I go in there, make sure all commands are selected and then type in append. And there it says append to end of timeline. By default, this is shift 12. You can leave this as is, but it can create your own and then hit U. And now it's mapped to append end of timeline. After you've done that, it's safe. And the first time you're doing this, DaVinci Resolve will ask you if you want to save this as a preset and you can give it a name. And I just named it as my name. If you like the layout, I will provide this as a free download. So you can just go ahead, download that and click on import preset. And this will come up and just save it wherever you want, save it on your desktop, then go in there, click and then hit open, and it automatically opens and you can use it. But I suggest create your own keyboard shortcuts. So you know, which key is for what and you get the most out of your time whilst editing. So that is not a fancy fusion tutorial whatsoever, but I thought that this will help you speed up your editing workflow a lot. And in the long run, this will save you so much time that you will be thankful that you saw this and that you implemented this in your daily workflow whenever you're editing. So with that being said, I hope you liked today's video. Let me know in the comments down below what you want to see in the future. And that's it for today. Hope you have a great day. See you in the next one. Bye.